given that we have these two limits, limit of x going to infinity of x squared e to the minus x equal to zero, and limit going out to minus infinity of x, x squared e to the minus x going to positive infinity, I want to sketch f of x equal to x squared times e to the minus x. First, let's sketch e to the x so I can get some things I can use later on. To sketch e to the x, I need four things. I need to know where the horizontal asymptote is. That's the x-axis, y equals zero. I know that e to the zero gives me one, so it's gonna be the point zero one. I know that e to the one is just e, which is roughly 2.7. So that's the point one comma 2.7, so over one, almost up to three. And then e to the minus one is just one over e, which is roughly, we might as well call it one third, one over 2.7. So I have the point minus one and roughly minus a third right there. So if I connect the dots, go to the asymptote, we get a graph that looks like this. Thing we, work, we should note, it's never equal to zero and it's always a positive number. Okay, it's never negative, always positive. Let's look for points where f of x is equal to zero. So we have x squared e to the minus x equal to zero. Recall, e to the x is always a positive number. If I flip it over, that's still gonna be a positive number. So this e to the minus x can never be zero. So for purposes of setting it equal to zero, this piece, the e to the minus x will have no effect. So we only care about when x squared is equal to zero, and that's when x is zero. So that'll give me this point here, zero, zero. Next, we want to look at increasing and decreasing. So we're going to do the derivative. That's just the product rule. Derivative of the first is 2x. We put the second in. The derivative of the second, well, this is going to be a chain rule. This is going to be e to the u with u equal to minus x. The derivative of e to the u, just back, right back at you, e to the u. The derivative of u, that's the derivative of minus x with respect to x, that's minus 1. So we get a minus one out in front, and then e to the u, which is just e to the minus x, and then my first is just x squared. I can factor e to the minus x out, leaving me with two x minus x squared, or x two minus x. When is this equal to zero? We saw that the e to the minus x will have no effect, so it's only when we have x equal to zero or two. So I wanna plot these points for reference. Well, if we put zero in there, we get zero out. We already plotted that point. So I want to know where is f of two. We put f of two in, that's going to give me x squared, gives me four, e to the minus two. And since e is roughly 2.7, and we're calling it three for now, that's going to give me roughly four over nine. So that's going to be this point, which should be a little bit lower, should be below the half, but it's good enough where it is. Okay, increasing and decreasing. To figure that out, we just check a point in each region. So we have our zero and two marking off the boundaries of increasing and decreasing. We check a point in each region. Okay, well, f of minus one, we push it through, gives me a minus three e. e is at roughly three, so this is roughly minus nine. So that's gonna be negative, and we're decreasing in the region with minus one. So that's gonna be right here, minus one's back there. If I put a one in, I'm gonna get e to the minus one. That's roughly one third. That's positive, so we're increasing in the region with one. And then finally, f prime of three, that's roughly e to the minus third times three times minus one. So that's minus roughly one ninth. So we're looking at a negative number. Okay, it doesn't matter what it is, we know it's negative. So that's gonna be decreasing when we're in this region. Now let's look at concavity so we can get a prettier graph. So I'll need the second derivative. So it's first derivative, I'm gonna use this version of it because it's set up good for the product rule. So product rule says derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So derivative of e to the minus x, 
Well, we just rewrite the e to the minus x, take the derivative of the top, gives me e to the minus x. Leave the second term alone. Now I'm going to add, leave the first term alone, and then derivative of the second term gives me 2 minus 2x. I collect everything together. I can factor out e to the minus x. To find out where this is 0, we already saw e to the minus x is always positive, so I can pretend it's not there x squared minus 4x plus 2. I crunch down with the quadratic equation, giving me 3.4 and 0.59. I'm going to plot those two points. So 3.4 into f gives me 0.39, which is going to be over here. Putting 0.59 into f gives me 0.19. It's going to give me a point around there. And they shouldn't be at the same height, but we're just going for a rough sketch, so good enough. So now I just want to check a point in each region so that we can verify concavity, and then we'll be able to draw our graph in. So f double prime at minus 1, that's going to give me e times 7. This is roughly 2.7, so that's going to give me something that's definitely positive. So we're concave up on this region past the 0.59. For 2, which is going to give me the middle region, we'll get e to the minus 2 times minus 2, which is definitely negative. e to the minus 2 is in the ballpark of 1 ninth. So that's a negative number. We're concave down. And then if I put 4 in, I'm looking at e to the minus 4 times 2. Okay, e to the minus 4, well, if we call e3, that's going to be 2 over 81. And so that's definitely a positive number. So we're looking at concave up here. So what do I have? I have decreasing here. Concave up means bowl up, so it looks like that. In this region, I have increasing concave up, so that means it's going that way. Bowl's going up, so it's like that. In this region, we have increasing concave down, so it's going to bowl down like that. In this region, we have decreasing concave down, so decreasing goes like that, and then concave down is like that. So it's like that. And then I have decreasing concave up. That's decreasing. And then concave up is like that. And then for the ends, we know that we are assuming that's going to go to 0. And then that's going to go off to infinity. So that's a graph of x squared e to the minus x.